The problem with real estate versus the stock is that real estate illiquid. And you make a mistake with real estate, you're stuck with it. And I've met so many, do you remember back in 2007, 2008? Yeah. These guys were skippers of the Titanic. You know, they, they expected the price of the real estate to keep going up, then a reverse, a reverse track on them, which all investments do. And they got, you know, stuck holding the bag. Well, these are unusual times. And uh, I'd be, and all that means is be more cautious. You've got to be smarter because as you know, the problem with real estate is illiquid. So you make a mistake with real estate, you're the skipper of the Titanic going down with it. Well, but the question though is, have we hit our maximums? Is there room for more appreciation in real estate? And if there isn't, what is your forecast going forward? Will the Fed wreck the markets by raising rates in 12 months or, or 24 months? Well, I don't really care because um, real, real estate is not about price going up. It's about cash flow. It's about income, income generation. That's all I care about. The second thing about real estate is it, I use debt financing and interest rates are at 2%. I mean, it's, that's, what, that's one of the reasons real estate is going up and I pay no taxes. And if you don't pay any taxes, that's more income. Yeah, nobody likes to get that kind of phone call, right? That's not a very good phone call, but you gotta have people on deck like your partner does in a property management scenario. So the barrier to owning rental, to owning rental properties though is the price because the cost to benefits gotta be there. You wanna have positive cash flow. You don't wanna be dumping money into a property and have a negative cash flow. And so at this type of, in, in this type of market environment, prices are really too high to get into rental properties, aren't they, Robert? Not for me. No, I just bought. I just bought sixty units <laughs> in Austin, Texas. The difference is, I call it. This is not the scientific term. It's called a twist. What can you, as an entrepreneur, what can you do to that property that'll increase its value and the rental income? For example, one of my very first properties was a two-bedroom, one-bath house in Portland, Oregon. All we did was add a second, uh, another bedroom and another bath to it and it almost tripled the rent. See, but I look at it as an entrepreneur. I'm not, I'm not a gambler. I, I don't just buy and flip. And I still have that property today. So Robert, when we look at the real estate market today, we know we've come up from the bottom of 2008 and those lows. And But what also has caused these prices to increase is rental properties. Rents are going to the moon. Why are rents going up? Is it, does it run lockstep with the prices in a, in a proportional fashion? Um, you know, rents have just gone crazy. So tell us why rents have gone up so much. Well, that's a good question, but I'm glad they are. But, uh, you know, there's a lot, real estate, you have to be an entrepreneur. I mean, really, seriously, it's a business. They've got to run it because the hardest thing about real estate is property management. You know, financing, putting the, you know, putting it together, putting the deal together, raising the financing is the easy part. Can you can you maintain long term property management? And that, that's why my what I, my partner Ken McElroy, who by the way has great books on it, Ken McElroy, the ABCs of real estate. I strongly recommend getting that because the reason he's my prop my partner is because he has one of the biggest property management companies in the Southwest. I don't like managing property, and that's one of the biggest reasons people don't like real estate is that I want to fix toilets at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we love that. And I, I love your book, Cash Flow Quadrant. I mean, it's been a while now, but I go back and read it every once in a while. And so far, we actually talked about that, why real estate investing is strong, because you get depreciation to offset the cash flow. You get cash flow, you get upside potential, you get to use uh, leverage, which of course is a, is a, is a double-edged sword. So, if you were putting money in one sector of real estate right now, one area, would it be residential, commercial? And if it were commercial, which, which subsector would it be in your opinion? Well, right now I, would, I wouldn't be in commercial. I've never been in commercial, you know, because the number one question in any business, I don't care what business it is, doctors, dentists, web, who's your customer? And my customers have always been income generating property, apartment houses. Mm -hmm. So I have about 10,000 apartment houses. Yeah. And in, in some ways, if you think about the timing today, 
I'd almost think even though the prices have gone up, it's a great time because with prices of real estate going up, fewer and fewer people can afford to buy their own homes and therefore they're going to be renting for that much longer. So am I being oversimplistic? Am I missing something or do you generally agree with that? No, I, I see the same thing, but the problem with real estate versus the stock is that real estate illiquid. And you make a mistake with real estate, you're stuck with it. Hmm. And I've met so many, do you remember back in 2007, 2008? Yeah. These guys were skippers of the Titanic. You know, they, they expected the price of the real estate to keep going up. Then it reversed, it reversed track on them, which all investments do. And they got, you know, stuck holding the bag. So real estate, in my opinion, this is my opinion, takes more financial education and more experience than a stock bond, mutual fund or ETF. Because you buy a stock bond, mutual fund, ETF, if you make a mistake, you can get out really quickly. Yeah, and it's funny because people think of flipping properties and putting money into them. But even if you have a huge apartment building, you can increase the green spaces, increase the lobby area, uh, maybe the laundry facilities make them better and do things like that that add the value without necessarily having to redo the kitchens in, in all hundred units. Um, so I, I'd, like, I'd like to focus our, our last couple of minutes, if we can, on maybe Mr. Ma McElroy's book or, you know, in general, how can our average income generation member know whether investing in real estate is right for him or her? Well, I better be interested in anybody willing to study. This is not a stock. I don't, I have zero stocks. I am not in the stock market. I think that is the biggest bubble I've ever seen on NASDAQ. I mean, the Dow hit all time highs today. And the problem with amateur investors is the problem isn't the stock market. The, the underlying problem with the stock market is the credit market. The credit market is coming apart. And so I, I'm worried about all these guys with 401ks and IRAs because this next crash is going to be a massive one, but the crash will be triggered by the credit market, you know, the treasury bonds, T-bills. And so that's why real estate will always do well as long as there's jobs in the area. So test number one is what's the industry closest to my real estate? So for example, I own huge uh, apartment houses in San Antonio, Texas, but they're right next to hospitals. Mm -hmm. Hospitals for the next at least three years will be in business, you know, and that and and most hospitals have lots of employees, and that's what makes it a good investment. Plus, I added I added washing machines to them and dryers, so I increased the rent. Then I added carports to it; it increased the rent. Then I increased security yep. and I increased the rent. So I'm an entrepreneur. I'm not a gambler. You know, yep. I don't go to Las Vegas. I don't like gambling. I like making money. I like running professionally and I have very professional partners.